Hi guys, we're going to do a little reading for this week's energy. Um, the message that's really coming through is to kind of just take a break to slow down, not to just kind of like, you know, let go of, of all of your responsibilities, but to just kind of slow down and take some time to like reset, reflect, um, and just kind of like go over all of the, you know, situations that you've overcome this year and just try to, um, take gratitude to heart. Now, I know that there are a lot of things going on, obviously, in the world around us, but it's important to, to really focus ourself and to keep ourself up, uplifted and be able to focus on our own priorities and our own situations so we can, you know, help, help the planet realign, readjust. We can do more when we are uplifted and when we're in good spirits. So, you know, I know that that's kind of like a double-edged sword sometime. Um, it can feel like, but it really isn't. It's, it's pretty, pretty apparent that we do better when we're in a better position in our minds. So when we're strong-headed, when we're thinking clearly, we are making better decisions. So that's just your little message for today. Um, but let's see what the cards have to say because, um, again, the message is really about like kind of taking this time to kind of reorganize, um, not necessarily like your whole situation, um, but just reorganize some things, um, around you so you can kind of get prepared for this shift. Um, because it's coming in fast. It really is. Like, the shift is really cheap. Like, we've cut out a lot of people recently. Some things that we thought were going to be a part of us um, for a longer run. Um, but we still had doubts about. Um, based on your intuition, your doubt is not a, always a fear. Sometimes it is a fear, but it's not always a doubt. I mean, it's not always a fear, your doubt. Um, sometimes it's your intuition. And, you know, like, I say this lightly because you always want to use discernment. You always want to figure out, you know, um, intuition versus emotions because, um, your intuition can get the better of your emotions and your emotions can get the better of your intuition. So, um, you just want to make sure that you're doing things, um, from a place, um, um, of understanding, not of judgment or criticism so much more so uh, understanding because the understanding part is what's important in in criticism anyway so you know like you don't want to be critical but you want to understand something so it's good to an analyze but not great to be analytic or to be um too super critical i don't know why there's something on my notification that popped up sorry i got distracted so, um, the first card that we got here is the Son of a Seven of Pentacles. So, right now, like, this is the harvest season. So, it's really about you being able, to, um, well, not being able, but you picking up the, like, the things that you've planted, the things that you planted and seeded. Like, we're, we're still planting some new, some new opportunities for ourselves for later, but we already have like this garden laid out like there's still fruit up in the tree above us like we know balance between give and take and so we have this the seven of pentacles we have we have strong intention and when when we're planning and when we're setting strong intention strong intent like we're doing ourselves a service for the future like we're going to see more growth we're going to see the cycle you know, there's going to be reward from all of this work, this labor that we're doing. Like, it's, it may not always feel like labor, but, you know, this, the work that we're putting in, it actually has purpose. I know. <laughs> and then we got the Knight of Pentacles. So, uh, it, it may feel like, it may feel like you're kind of fixated on, like, the money aspect, and that's where you want to see more growth and potential, which I totally understand. You know, that's totally reasonable. Um, but you don't want to lose, you don't want to lose meaning in your work. You don't want to lose the, the, because when we start, when we get more involved in the business side of creativity, like, we lose a lot of our spark. We lose a lot of our inspiration. 
So you just want to make sure that you're not losing your inspiration through through your work. So that can be really tough to get past. Um, but when you set like a strong intent and when you when you set yourself up just for money alone and you look at ways to become more productive or be able to do things more productively, yeah, some of those things can be really great, but but um, in, in trying to focus more on the business side, you can lose a lot of the passion for what you're doing. So, like, it eventually just becomes a product and not a creation. So, like, that's where, like, the gray area comes from. And that's usually, it has a lot more to do with your perspective and resetting because even if you have a great perspective, repetition becomes repetition. And repetition becomes comfortable. And it becomes something where we can lose passion. It doesn't necessarily mean that we will lose passion, but we can lose passion in finding um, you know, comfortability and complacency and in, in, in doing things repetitively. When you're just like sitting there stamping the same thing over and over again on one thing, like eventually it can become like pretty. But what you can do is focus more like a lot. Okay, so a lot of artists, they make their own merch or they get somebody to make their merch and they produce it in like quantities, like a certain amount of quantities or um, they try to keep all the labor, they try to be very involved in the labor, so there's, you know, it's it's kind of expensive doing those things, and it's kind of becomes much more personal, personable when you can sit there and sign, or when you create some limited edition collectible items for your, your fans to, like, buy, like, it's something personable, um, it's not even just always personable, it's like something, like, I have a collectible shirt from one of my my rap groups that I love, um, and then I saw, like, Snow to Product, I don't really listen to her music, but I saw her, like, signing all of her, her cups that she sells, um, to her fans, and so she was, like, sitting there actually doing the labor part, but then you think about it, she's doing that and using discernment, because obviously that's not her passion, it's in their signing cups, okay, let's be real, but her passion is music. Ideally, I would believe it is since she's a rapper. I don't listen to her music. I'm sorry. Um, but ideally, I would believe it would be her music since she makes music. And she probably finds a lot more joy and, and freedom and creativity through doing that. So there's something that you can do mentally is what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to get at is there's something that you can do mentally to use discernment and break these things into parts so you don't lose that creative aspect and that passion for what you're doing. Um, but it's going to take some intellectual discipline. So again, it has nothing to do with, um, it has nothing to do with the process itself is where you lose the passion, but the process is, itself is where you can lose the passion. So I hope I hope that makes enough sense. I've gone over that enough. So um, the next card that we got here is the Magician. So being very bold. Um, you see how he has these cards and he's shuffling those cards and he knows what he's doing. He's playing some illusionary tricks with his hands. I don't know if you're familiar with Magicians, but all of their power lies in their hands. All of the manipulation, the illusion is within their hands. Um, so being self-determined, bold, skilled, being intent with your intentions. <laughs> like being super intent with, with what you're doing is super important because that's going to shift you and magnetize this energy for you. So again, you'll feel much more of this abundance coming through and you'll have much more respect for it. Um, but no matter where you are in the line of your time span, whether you're starting, when you're, whether you're in the middle, whether you're further down the line, like at the end of the game or whatever that means, like you have the ability to continuously have passion for what you're doing. All of that is a mental state. All of that is a mental state of being, and 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 when you when you focus on the work itself. Again, that's where you lose a lot of the passion. So when you 
when you feel like this sort of lack, maybe take a step back. Maybe take a step back and just kind of reevaluate. I know a lot of artists. Um, I know that a lot of us don't have like the liberty to go on some like nice trip where we can just kind of like say F you to the rest of the world and just kind of disappear uh, off grid and go to the beach and just live in some like cool beach house for like whatever and be much more in touch, much more grounded. Um, but there are other ways you can do that so you don't have to think about it that way um that you have to go all deep into it but like literally even like creating like a retreat for yourself like i go on adventures sometimes just to find some like cool natural like spots to go to especially during the summer like i'll find like some cool water holes to go to um somewhere i've never been before because there's a bunch where i live um and some of them are road trips but like some of them are really just about spending some gas money and putting some food in your cooler and just going for a ride and then disappearing for like maybe tell somebody where you're going but <laughs> like just disappearing for like a day where you're just like no technology no cell phone you don't even take pictures of your landscape bro just be in the moment when you lose um when you lose uh like attachments to the rest of the world and you're just kind of like in your own bubble like bro like things become more peaceful you feel much more grounded that way so just uh yeah find some ways to reset because like resetting is going to be different for different people but like generally it's always going to be the same concept and the same construct like you're going to need isolation um and if you're not good at being at peace with yourself and isolation scares you there may be some more things that you might want to focus and work on I'm just saying, like, those things are good and beneficial for you. You need some space away from other people because other people, no matter how spectacular they are or, you know, what good intent they actually do have, like, they are an influence on our energy, our intellect. So it's great to go away and get away from influence sometimes. So that's that's the message. So um, even if we're not celebrating, like, Thanksgiving right now because it's, like, holiday season... Like, even if you're not celebrating, like, just go and, and, like, spend some time with yourself to use this holiday for gratitude for yourself. Like, again, all those things that you overcame this year and, and the last year prior, like, just, t like, come on, give yourself some credit and, like, reset and relax. And then, yeah, so we have, like, the sun is the last card here. I'm just going to drop that, whatever. Um, so, joy, greatness, enlightenment. Again, this is a time to be happy and a time to be, you know, in your element. So, like, relax, chill out, eat some good food, work on some creative projects, like, like in a chill setting, not scrambled, not worried, not concerned, not stressed, none of that. Just work on some projects. Like, be willy-nilly about it and be free. Let your energy flow free. Because then you'll find much more answers that way anyway. Like, when you're not frantic, when you're not scrambled, and when you're just chilling, a lot more of our creative energy flows that way. We flow much better when we're not under a bunch of stress and pressure i don't care what what these companies want us to be doing with all this stress and they think productivity is helpful for i mean um stress is is good for productivity there's so many studies out there that prove otherwise so like take that into consideration if you're wanting to be a business owner yourself like, being stressed out is not, that is not your currency, that is not your equivalent of success, okay? That is not your currency of success, is how much time and energy you spend stressing out about being a business owner. That does not determine success. And if that doesn't determine success, then needn't worry about it because if it's not contributing to your success then it's not adding to it okay it's subtracting okay all right so again 
let this time be a relaxed time to reevaluate, to reassess, not to neglect and just get rid of everything, but to come back to things in a mental peaceful state and ground yourself in that thought in that landscape of what things are going to be next year what you want them to be not what you want to come in um from the universe but what you want to come in specifically from the universe like don't be general be direct be specific and things will roll out for you in some really beautiful ways. Like you'll figure things out once you become decisive on the decisions you want to make. You'll see how easier these things can come forward to you with the law of attraction, the law of affirmation, and magnetism. When you magnetize your soul, you'll start seeing these things and you'll be like, oh, conceptually, this actually starts to make more sense to me now. Because I am much more balanced and in tune consciously and subconsciously. And so now I understand that I don't have all the answers, but I can have the answers come to me. What? Now you just learned the cheat code of life. Okay, I love you guys. Bye.